Friends and family, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about how to lose weight the healthy way. So for all y'all out there that are trying to get your beach bodies ready for the warm weather, stay tuned. I am an African girl, specifically Ghanaian, okay? And until I came to America, I did not know <laughs> that being heavy was a problem. Because where I came from, when you're heavy, that is a sign of health and wealth. But when I came here and I, I, I felt, wow, Americans are pretty rich, you know, a whole lot of them are overweight and they are wealthy. They, they just, it just really is a land flowing with milk and honey. You know, that truly, I, I, I thought that, I felt um, that when you're poor, you don't have food to eat and when you don't have food to eat, you're skinny. So when you're heavier, you have food to eat, which means you're wealthy. And that's exactly, truly how I thought. But anyway, I've been here long enough now that I understand <laughs> now. <laughs> so if you wanna lose weight, here are the things that you need to do. I think it's very, very important to start with a detox. You must detoxify your body. Make sure that you detoxify for at least two weeks to 30 days if you can. Because remember, it has to be gentle. There are things that are stuck in your, your, your organs that have been there for years. It won't take one week to get them out. Any detox that tells you that it'll clean your body in one week is too harsh, if it works. <laughs> a lot of them don't work. They just make you poop a lot and you think, oh, because I'm pooping, I'm detoxing. No, it has to have the right ingredients in the detoxifying agent to gently dissolve or pull away the things from that are stuck in the walls of your stomach and that are intricately you know intertwined in your liver and your kidneys and stuff and gently very gently help the body to help itself and get them out slowly and assuredly and just you know get them out so one week detoxes please avoid them they're a waste of your time and they're not healthy they're not good so you if you don't start with a detox you're slowing down your chances or reducing your chances of getting, you know, having a good weight loss journey. So that's the first thing. There are so many different um, uh, methods of detoxifying. You can juice, you do a liquid diet for a couple of days or more if you can. Um, kale, uh, uh, spinach, um, carrot, those are real power foods that will give your body the nutrients your body needs and not deprive your body of stuff. Try as much as possible to use natural things to try to detoxify. That's number one. Number two, how much do you eat? I know people who are very heavy don't eat much though. Um, and so again, it's a detoxifying thing that I feel like for them would help them the most. But if you eat a lot, you're going to have to try and reduce bit by bit how much you eat. Now the thing is, you can't go from eating a huge bowl of food and then suddenly eat half of that. Remember your stomach expands like a balloon, right? It expands and stretches out as you eat. That's why people um, who are trying to lose weight really quickly go and get their stomach stapled because it's stretched out. But at the same time, if you start to eat less bit by bit, not all of a sudden by bit by bit, your stomach does, does come back in. It takes a while. Remember, it didn't take two days for you to gain all that weight, so it's not gonna take two days for you to lose it, right? So it's gonna take a while, but bit by bit, if you reduce your food, let's say every other meal by one extra, like, I don't know if you guys use ladles or like the cooking spoon, the big ones, you know, every other meal, reduce it by one of that bit by bit, um, in between meals, eat less uh, carbohydrates, eat less processed stuff, eat more fruits, more raw things, fruits and vegetables. Fruits have sugar, remember that. Um, sugar gives you weight, whether it's processed or unprocessed. If it's unprocessed, it gives you gain less weight from it, but if it is processed, of course, you gain more weight from it. So if you can eat vegetables in between meals as opposed to fruits, that's even better. But if you can't and you're like me and mm, you can juice, you know, uh, vegetables and add some fruit to give it some flavor, you know what I mean? Just a little bit of fruit to give it flavor, but try to reduce the quantity 
of food that you eat. Try also to make sure, this is the third thing, make sure you reduce as the day goes by how much you eat for each meal. Each meal that you eat should be less than the previous meal that you ate. So you wake up in the morning, breakfast should be the biggest meal that you have. Remember, that is what's setting you up for your entire day. However, don't eat like a whole loaf of bread and uh, a two liter bottle of, of, of Coca-Cola for breakfast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can't do that. You want something that is nutritious. You want avocado, bananas, um, in your, bananas in your cereal. You want oatmeal, you know, that you cook yourself if you can, or, you know, just pour hot water in it, however you guys do it. Reduce how much sugar you're putting in there. If you want to sweeten it, go ahead and try um, putting some fruit in there instead of sugar. I know people um, put the nutri sweet and those things. Remember, when they say the sugar is reduced, they're replacing it with something equally sweet but more chemical. chemical. If truly it is reduced sugar and it actually tastes like it's reduced and they haven't replaced it with anything, that's good. But a lot of times when they reduce the sugar, they put aspartame, something, you know, something that's not good in there and cancer causing or things like that. So you have to be very careful. It's okay if your stomach feels hungry in between meals. Eat a snack, drink water. One of the ways that some people try to um, lose weight is to drink a full glass of water before you start a meal. There are two tra trains of thought on that. Um, some people say, yeah, drink a full glass of water before you eat, it starts the digestive juices flowing. Some people say it, it, it um, dilutes your digestive juices and therefore they're not as potent in breaking down the food that you ingest. So you want to research that and see what works for your body. I would also say uh, before you eat breakfast, a handful of you know blueberries, you know, to get the digestive juices flowing with your antioxidants and everything, and then you eat your meal. But you want to make sure that your, your food is, is got more of the ranges of colors that you're supposed to have in a balanced diet. Reduce your carbohydrates. For all these meals that I'm talking about, reduce your carbohydrates. Carbohydrates tend to sugar, sugar makes you fat. Point blank period. And remember, you have your carbs and then you eat sugar as well, like sweet things, which is also sugar right there. And then um, those things go and meet and here we have the diabetes situation going on. We have high blood pressure situation going on. And we have medications that are making you bloat going on. It becomes a cycle, it becomes a repetitive cycle. So let's say you have lunch at one o'clock and your bedtime is usually 11 p.m. You have to eat a couple of meals in between there. Again, we're trying to avoid eating huge meals that last us for five hours. We want to eat smaller meals that last us for two hours. Give your body a chance to, to, to digest that and get rid of it before you eat some more. We end up having big stomachs because the food that we ate at breakfast hasn't finished digesting by dinner time. We had all that bacon in there and all the fat in there and dinner. By dinner time, that food is still, your, your stomach is still trying to process that stuff. You know what I mean? So you want to make sure that you don't, you know, eat things that are difficult for your stomach to process. The meats, a lot of meats, you know, it, it takes a while. Like somebody told me steak takes how many hours to process in your stomach? Like it lasts till the next day, they said. I was like, ugh, <laughs> I lost steak though, but. You want to add fiber to every meal. Fiber is very important. It absorbs the crap, mm -hmm. bad things, uh-huh, <laughs> and lets it out, okay? Fluids, drink more water, no joke. Um, it, it, water helps you flush things out. So if you drink a lot of fruit juices and a lot of uh, sodas, woo, <laughs> they won't help you flush the things out. They're fluids, but you need water. <laughs> okay, so for those of us that have a sweet tooth, some of the things that we need to do um, when you buy a whole thing of juice, start diluting it. Add water to it, you know, when you pour, pour this much, you know, juice and add this much water if you can. You can do it bit by bit, but again, I am trying to help people not do this crash 
diet thing like, oh, I'm good, I gotta lose 10 pounds in a week. When you do that, you gain it back like almost twice that amount, you know, after that week is over. When you, and it's hard to maintain because you cut your lifestyle, you change it so much, so drastically that, you know, when you have that withdrawal and you go back into the old lifestyle, it's just even harder to, to get back on the bandwagon. But one of the ways in which you can also lose weight is to put a corset around your stomach or a band around your stomach that holds your stomach in so that your stomach is literally physically smaller and can't take that much food. So <laughs> that is one of the ways and you keep it on and it, first of all, your clothes look better on you because your stomach has gone inside a little bit. And secondly, you get full faster. It, it saves you money. You don't buy as much food because you're full faster, right? And you start to lose weight. It's like a th three wins right there. You look better because your stomach is a little bit flatter. You eat less, so that saves you money. And you lose weight. I mean, win, win, win. <laughs> <laughs> can't lose with that one okay so that's one of the ways it's a lifestyle change and that's why it has to be gradual starting with your detox your detox shouldn't be just at the beginning of your diet you know or your lifestyle change it really should be every maybe other month for in the beginning you start to you know detox every other month and as you're doing the detoxing and um, watching what you're eating and reducing and I'm not saying again cut all the bad things out all of a sudden your body is gonna be like what are you doing <laughs> it's gonna go into shock mode and when our body goes into shock mode it does this it hangs on to everything that it has and that's the thing that a lot of people don't tell you when you're trying to lose weight if you suddenly shock your body it can go one of two ways it can totally just like crap out like okay I have no energy I don't want to do this I don't want to just I don't want to engage or it will suddenly you know it will lose whatever weight but then you're going to start having cravings so badly that you're going to go right back to what you used to before and it's going to be even worse it is a gradual thing it is a gradual thing and find a support system people that are going through it with you, everything in moderation is okay. You gained weight for several different reasons. It could be that you're eating a whole lot. It could be that your thyroid is malfunctioning. You know what I mean? It could be that you have a terribly, terribly, terribly slow metabolism. So you look at those things and you adjust your lifestyle to match it. I'm going to give that disclaimer. I am not a doctor. These are things that I've seen. These are things that I have tried. You have to be ready for it. You have to be mentally ready for it. If your mind is not on board, <laughs> I'm not trying to discourage anybody, but your mind has to be ready for it, okay? Um, people talk about exercises. I am not an exercise fanatic. I'm very lazy when it comes to exercising. <laughs> but I want you to understand something when you're trying to lose weight, how exercise plays into it. I understand you're trying to burn calories. But also realize for those that are you know trying to gain muscle muscle is heavier than fat so if you keep standing on that scale every day you may actually end up seeing that you're gaining weight that's okay if it's being replaced if the fat is being replaced by muscle don't get discouraged and make sure you're doing it for the right reasons not to gain a boyfriend or a girlfriend or somebody it's for your health right it's for you you have to remember that it's, it's, it's for you and not for anybody else. So be encouraged. You can do this. You can do this. There are some of these other things that I have used, you know, uh, other methods, colon uh, irrigation, whatever. I forget the name of it, where they wash your stomach and get, you know, all some of the stuff that is stuck in the walls to wash it out, you know, and everything. I've, I have done all those things and um, I have had great results uh, for those. Um, and again, I, I, for me, I do it for my health. Um, it's not for any other reason, but you know, you want to make sure that you're healthy. So eat moderately, give your body something to work with. Just as your body is getting energy from the food that you eat, it is also detoxifying itself from the food that you eat, if you eat the right things. So don't stop, you know, eating and start and just go ahead and starve yourself. And then eating a big dinner, that is the biggest fad I don't know who came up with it. It is terrible. You can't lose weight 
starving yourself for breakfast and lunch and eat a big dinner. You're going to bed. <laughs> doesn't make sense to me. You're going to bed. How are you going to eat the biggest meal when you're going to bed? That's how I gained weight. Eating my biggest meal at night time. That's how I gained my gorgeous 15 pounds. You hear me? Uh-huh. So why would you eat your biggest meal at night when you're going to bed? You're not going to be burning it. Your body is repairing itself, yes, when you're sleeping, but it doesn't need a huge meal to repair itself. It actually needs good nutrients. That's all it needs. Now, unless you work at nighttime. If you work at nighttime, that's different. But if you sleep during the night, like most of us, don't eat a huge meal at nighttime because that won't help you. So those are my really, 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 really quick tips for you. If you have any questions, again, let me know. I want to. Um, I want to be here for you. I understand. I understand what you're going through. And I know it's not easy, especially for people who have been heavy from their, you know, childhood and they're adults and they're like, okay, I'm tired of being heavy. I want to lose this weight. I understand. So don't give up. It is very, 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 very possible. It's a lifestyle change and lifestyle changes happen slowly. Take your time. It's not a race. It is not a race. Take care of yourself. Make sure that you are thinking about your health first and foremost, okay? All right, and I hope this message encourages you, gives you hope, and I hope to see you in the very next video. Until then, stay blessed.